okay, I'm gonna call this uh, meeting of the East Gloucester Veterans Memorial Elementary School Building Committee uh, to order. It's uh, March 18th um, and um, this meeting, I gotta find that. I, I shouldn't have it memorized by now, but there are too many things on my desktop. Um, uh, uh, is Bing. This yeah. meeting, <laughs> you have it memorized. I, I, well, I have it right here. Oh, okay, you wanna read it? This meeting is recorded by video and audio in accordance with state open meeting law, consistent with the governor's orders suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and barring gatherings of more than 10 people. This meeting will be conducted by remote participation. If you're calling in on a phone, you can press star nine to request to speak. If you're watching on a computer or device, there is a raise hand button that you can tap or press to uh, request to speak. Uh, Jonathan, you can now say that there is not that option at the meeting. <laughs> okay, we, we, we are not anticipating having any uh, public input at this meeting. Um, and um, Maria, could we have a roll call? Or not Maria, um, Christopher, we'll go for a roll we call. have a roll call vote for uh, um, attendance. Yes, uh, Jonathan Pope. Here. Richard Sapphire. Uh, Greg Catamartori. Here. Thank you. Lancy. Here. Thank you. Donna Compton. Here. Thank you. John Dunn. Gary Frisch. Here. Thank you. Matt Fusco. Here. Thank you. Grant Harris. Present. Thank you. Joe Lucido. Here. Thank you. Ben Lummis. I'm here. Thank you. Jameson Manning. <coughs> uh, Ryan Marks. Oh. Um, Amy Pascarello. Here. Thank you. Adam Rosell. Here. Thank you. And uh, Katie Eunice. Here. Thank you. All seven. Okay. Um, so I, I, Ryan Marks, um, I, he hasn't sent in a letter of resignation, but he, he um, needs to be taken off the building committee because he's now been promoted to the city engineer and the city engineer will be reviewing this project in, um, as the city's, um, in the city's capacity. And that would be a conflict of interest, I believe. Um, so, but I don't think that uh, I think we have all of our um, slots filled um, without Mark Ryan. So I think we're, we're good there. So the first order of business is uh, to approve the minutes of uh, March 11th, um, 2021. Um, that was last week. Um, uh, those were sent out. Um, are there any um, corrections or omissions? I move that we approve the meeting minutes of March 11th, 2021. Somebody say second. 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 There you go. And uh, uh, Chris, could we have a roll call vote? Jonathan Pope. Yes. Greg Cavernatori. Yes. Thank you. Kathy Clancy. Yes. Thank you. Donna Compton? Yes. Thank you. Oh, I see Richard Sapphire. Uh, Richard, you're on mute, or actually I didn't hear you. <laughs> He's waving. All right. <laughs> I'll, I'll, uh, okay, thumbs up. I'll okay, move, that's a I'll good move forward. Uh, Donna Compton? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Gary Frisch? Yes. Thank you. Uh, Matt Fusco? Here. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Grant Harris? Yay. Yes. Thank you. Joe Lucido? Yes. Thank you. Ben Lummis? Yes. Thank you. Amy Pascarello? Yes. Thank you. Adam Roselle? Yes. Thank you. And Katie Eunice? Yes. Thank you. Um, it passes unanimously. 
Um, the next order is uh, approval of invoices, but we have none, whereas we just met last week. And now uh, we are gonna get a, a, an update on the design submission update and overview. Um, is Michelle gonna present that? Maybe. Is so, actually, all right, I was muted there. So Jonathan, she needs to get her phone onto the, the meeting, elevated to panelists, because she's having a problem with her mic. Okay, I, I <sighs> all right. Um, that being said, um, I can't see my agenda because of the um, screen sharing. Um, there. there we go. Uh, so we could um, uh, move on to um, the project cost estimate update, which is very exciting. Um, and uh, Tom, would you want to oh, read that? that up? Yes, here it is. Uh... All right, good, good evening. I'm Mark Lydon. I'm like the new kid on the block on the project and it's, it's pretty cool because I get to present some really good and exciting um, news. So as you know, the project went through its design development phase. It was um, estimated by two highly capable and competent teams and the construction manager and the designers estimators after the estimates were reconciled were each under the 51,925,531 approved construction budget. That's fantastic. And just to point out, it's truly good news because it often is not the case on a MSBA funded project. Very often, and maybe even more often, there is a budget overrun at the DD phase that requires a, and again, people use the term value engineering, but in these cases, it's pretty much scope reduction to get back on budget. And the great news here is we maintain the full DD scope. We have estimates that are, you know, I mean, WT Rich's estimate was what, six tenths, six hundredths of a percent um, off the budget. And um, PMC's estimate was roughly half a percent. I mean, those percentages are tighter than most bid um, ranges. So again, truly good news. And, and again, as the new kid, I'd like to just point out that I believe there were a couple of key choices made by your team that put you in this position. Um, and, and the key one being that you brought WT Rich, the construction manager on board to participate in the schematic design estimate which established the total project budget and the approved construction budget for your project scope and budget agreement with the MSBA. So having them on early was a smart decision. It's one I typically recommend because now WT Rich has ownership and now reinforces the ownership of that, um, that budget amount with a good estimate. And the second component is your designer. Um, has done a commendable job because more often than not, this is the time where you see, in some cases, some, some you know, pretty significant scope creep during the design development phase, but they're actually doing a commendable job managing the job to, to the budget, which um, you don't often see. So you guys have a team of, of professionals in place that I think suits you and situates you to deliver you know, quite a successful project. So guys, after that, you can't let us down, right? <laughs> Making me blush, Mark, all those <laughs> kind words. But uh, yeah, no, everyone did a great job. And it was awesome. We just estimated it. We didn't have to, we didn't have to monkey with any numbers. Uh, Brad and his team did a really good job staying on, on focus with the, uh, with the scope of work. So good news for all. And again, it's not always the case. So that's something that um, I find particularly heartening in this situation. Yeah, everyone's mad at us when we tell them the estimate's too high. 
Yeah, the truth hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> Mark, Mark, uh, thank you so much for that good news. Uh, it's, it's great to see. I you know obviously there's this is as you said, you know, in in past projects, typical typical projects. It's, it's very typical for for that scope creep to happen, you know. Uh, and I think the the building committee, the interior and exterior, have done a nice job of not adding things on and staying within that. But then also the as you said, there, you know, a, a lot of that works done by the earlier on from schematic design phase and we're holding that steady. And that's, um, so uh, really appreciate uh, hearing that good news and, and it's good for the project, obviously good news for project and I think good news for our taxpayers too, that, you know, on time, on budget and let's keep doing that. Exactly. Yeah. Great, are there any other questions or comments? Um, I can't see everybody, so um, just speak up. I see. Um... I'm looking at the panel. You raise your hand if you got any questions. Okay. And I don't see any right now, Jonathan. Any, so. I just reiterate what, what, what Ben said. This is really good news. Um, yeah. There's nothing worse than, um, you know, going through all of this work at this point and then going back and having to say, well, what can we, what can we not do? What can we not have? What can we, right. you know, what can we do uh, for less money? And um, I've been in that situation and it's not, right always the most pleasant day to way to spend your time. So yeah. Yeah. Um, there's still, okay. there's, there's still, just there's everyone still should know that there's, there's, you know, in this area right here, there's design and estimating contingencies and escalation, which hopefully will allow us to uh, absorb uh, some minor uh, things that may not be in specifically spelled out in the drawings in detail. Again, um, as you move into construction documents, things get more detailed. But then the escalation of what happens to the uh, between now and when the projects bid out, even though when Jonathan will get to some of the sequencing here, some of it will be bid out earlier than others. And then the file sub bids, which will be bid out later in the year, comprise, you know, can be somewhere between 45 and 50 percent of the cost. Um, you know, what happens between now and then could affect the job. But, you know, right now. That's what's being projected to the midpoint of construction, which is what's required by the MSBA to carry escalation to that point. So again, there's, you know, there's, there's, the thing is to have a budget that allows you to be successful. And that's really kind of where we're at right now. So. And Tom, um, just to remind folks, I mean, all the products I've worked on, I mean, it, it is standard operating procedure to have those contingencies. Oh, yes. In and the escalation ones, you know, right. That's right. just, that's just, how these products are always, are always, you know, budgeted right. and built, and right. um, and, yeah. and it does allow for, you know, things that come up and, and then right. to them. So that's, that's all exactly right. Yeah, great. yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's important for the committee to understand we're not trying to estimate the bid price. You know, <laughs> we're trying to and and Rich is uh, WT Rich is doing the same thing with the cost estimator here for the for the designer. You're trying to get the real value of the work. So if you do a hard bid, you know, our cost estimate would say if you throw out the high bid and throw out the low bid and average the rest of them, that's probably the real value of the work. You can't guess what somebody might do as a business decision to either come in with a very low bid or something could happen to make it high. We're trying to estimate or the teams are trying to estimate the real value of the work. And so you want to be in the middle when the sweet spot of where you think that number is coming, which has a little bit of cushion both ways to about for, for you know the worst thing is to go through this whole process and get to a point where you you can't build or you know uh, build the project you know and and that's what happened with a lot of the chapter 149 hard bid jobs where you don't know what you've got until you bid the job out and you could be over your bid and not have not be able to, to award the bid so um, that's one of the advantage of the CMR delivery method is that you know you're you're checking with the industry you know, um, in terms of values of, of mm -hmm. these scopes of work uh, constantly. And that's what that's the value WT Rich is bringing to this project. So, so anyway, all good news. Okay. So, okay. So Michelle, are you, are you connected or do you want to move into John Rich's um, piece? Jonathan, uh, Maria gave Michelle the ability to unmute and speak um, from the attendee section because she can't promote, I don't think she can promote a phone. Okay, let me... So she can speak, you know, she can speak 
to whatever she's presenting from there. Okay, is that, um, is this telephone number? Um, 4019, is that, yeah, that must be her. Is that Michelle? Yes, that's her. Okay. Um, I, I don't, I don't have the ability to unmute her. She's muted. She, 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 she can, can, you, can you hear me now? Yeah, we yes, can hear you now. Yay. <laughs> I apologize for my, my ability, my, my uh, lack of ability to join earlier. Um, so I do have that presentation for you. And I, if I can share my screen here for a moment, host disabled participant screenshotting sharing. So I need that. I need you to allow me to share my screen as well. Because you're now a co-host. I, I just oh, did that. Oh, thank you. Okay. And y'all let me know when you can see my screen. We, we, we can yeah. see it. Great. All right, so what I wanted to do is um, just start with our schedule. This is a little bit going back in time and then uh, showing what we have going forward for the rest of the month. So we have continued uh, our team coordination with our structural and MEP and FP and um, our other consultants. And as Mark noted, you know, we we have put out our cost estimate. So all of that coordination and hard work that we've done over the last uh, few months has paid off quite well. We've had hardware and security meetings. We had our initial code review with the building inspector and the electrical inspector. We've met with commissioning agents um, presented to the traffic uh, commission. We had an on-site virtual meeting, or not an on-site, we had a site virtual meeting with NEPA. And we have met with the Gloucester Police and Fire Department to go over the site and building logistics and walk them through the plans. As of yesterday, we had our cost reconciliation and we're going to begin our permitting process towards the end of this week or month. Or, um, all in preparation to submit to the MSBA at the end of the month. And then what we have, we are issuing what's called an early release package for bidding. And our goal is to do that on um, March 31st. And that will begin the bidding process for the project. Sorry, trying to, there we go. Um, our design development plans, which we'll be presenting to the MSBA include our documents. These I think I presented the last time we were together, but as you can see, they've come a long way since our SD drawings. We had very few changes as we began our design development process. We did have some changes in the, what we call back of house. So this is our receiving area, um, as well as the elevator. Um, we had to increase the size of the elevator on the first floor. We had some changes in our music room and then throughout our design development, we had some changes and pushing and pulling within inches of uh, some of the other rooms just because of structural uh, coordination. But overall, the plans that you saw back in SD are very similar to the plans that you'll be seeing uh, through the DD process. This is the second floor. And again, the third floor and always with the embedded um, special education spaces. Our site plans have been updated with the grading and stormwater management. We've had some coordination with the backyard growers about locations of planting boxes. We've talked extensively with our landscape architect regarding the play area the, um, and the grading and uh, the um, sidewalks and all of the areas around uh, the building and the site and the landscaping piece. And a few changes that we've had on the exterior of the building, including lightening up some of the metal panels. I don't know if you remember some of those panels earlier were darker. We had um, only two colors. We've added a third color in, but then created a background of more white panels. Here's a view as you're approaching through the past the cafeteria to the front door underneath. We're taking, we're taking a really good look at the column structures outside. Your playground for kindergarten and the bus loop. 
and looking back at the school from uh, the top of Webster Street as you're coming around. Interior of the building. Again, our theory um, for bringing the colors of the ocean and the sunset into the building and just having a light, uh, fun kind of environment that was warm and welcoming, that has played out throughout the entire building. This is your main entrance with the cafeteria to the right. As you come up to the top of the stairs, you can see the media center with little punched openings. So you, as you're walking by, you can peek into the media center and see what's going on. The wave wall, the overlook, the gymnasium is behind this wall here to the right, and the view to the back at the end of the corridor. The media center inside looks fun and inviting. Um, with little nooks for, for kids to hunker down and read, as well as tables to work at, and little spaces for them to go and sit by themselves. The little openings that punch out into the hallway so you can peek in and out. The art room, creative open space that, that's made for getting messy. We, we have uh, epoxy floor, wet spaces. This is a very industrial looking space so that you know that this is a place where good things can happen and art can, can begin to happen. We have some pottery wheels that, that will be placed in this space. And again, daylight from all areas. And the garage door opens out into the media center so that if you're working on a project and then you're going out into the media center to, to maybe look at different artists or to see a presentation out there, the connection is uh, right there and open. Our gymnasium, uh, again, we, we went back and forth a lot with the colors, uh, which are reflected both in the acoustical panels as well as the pads that come around. The uh, performance area has been simplified a bit with just a, the wood wraparound area. And then the extended learning space. So this happens on all third, three floors uh, adjacent to the classroom wing. So this is the area where you can bring the classroom out. There's places, uh, wet spaces for hands-on project learning. And, and again, teacher and presentation spaces. So you can bring groups of classrooms here to this space and have ongoing projects that are always on display. This is your general classroom. So again, our cubbies behind the walls, lots of storage space for teachers, multiple teaching zones within this space, the folding wall that opens one classroom into the other so you can have combined learning with different classrooms. And then different cubby spaces and storage spaces along the exterior wall. So that's where we are for our DD. This is the work that will be submitted to the MSBA. Stop sharing there. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Yeah, any questions? Um, yeah, two questions. Michelle, on the outside, the columns um, have wood around them. Is that actual wood or is it a material that looks like wood? That is actual wood panels. Okay. They're not wood uh, columns, they're surrounding steel columns. Right, right, yeah, that's what I figured there. The, structurally, they're um, strong. Um, and I guess I'll bring up, is there any maintenance um, issue that the DPW or concern that the DPW has either said, these are good, we're ready to go? I mean, I know, we're, and I, obviously I'm not trying to change what gets submitted because that's not. Sure. Um, well, we've had conversations with Joe, and I don't want to speak for, with him. I see that he's on the line. Um, these will be treated with the Sickens kind of um, finish that we had over at West Parish. Joe, I don't know if you want to speak a little bit about that. Yeah, we, we're we're okay with that finish. Um, West Parish has held up well. Um, they're due to be redone this summer. So, I mean, we've gotten five years out of them, so it's not a labor-intensive you know, if we were doing it every summer, it'd be a different story. But uh, like I said, West Parish has held up well, so we have no concerns. Wonderful. Kathy, you don't have to strip those all down, right? It really is what Joe's talking about is a maintenance coat. Right, so right, right. Yeah. Yeah, great, great. Um, and then my other question is the white panels, are they going to look white? Are they going to stay looking white given <laughs> dust and dirt? And, <laughs> um, you know, how do they hold up over time? They do hold up well over time. They are metal panels. And, you know, 
they they do hold up well over time. We use them on several different projects, and the color stays. Even the white panels stay. Excellent. Thank you. Any other questions? Looks great. Um, then we'll move on to our construction sequencing overview. So um, do you want me to share screen or Jonathan, do you want to share your own? You got your muted, you Jonathan. There we go. Good. Okay, unmuted. Yes, I wanted to uh, have you share the screen so we did the right thing. Um, yeah, so we just wanted to give the, the building committee a little bit of uh, heads up because uh, we did have these early packages. They've, they've, they've been part of the process and the schedule for uh, pretty much the whole time since SD. We did tweak early package two a little bit uh, back uh, late fall. But these are coming up. So I want to give a little look ahead because the first one is starting to get some traction. Uh, the first early, uh, the first scope of work, which we call early package one, um, that's going to be really primarily the abatement and demolition of the existing veterans school. Um, there is what we call site enabling because there's going to be some selective drainage work and maybe putting in the uh, the erosion controls and the fence and maybe some site access and construction uh, construction entryways and things like that. So that whole package together, uh, we're estimating it to be around two to two and a half million dollars. Uh, when we get a little closer and we finalize our scope of work definition, we can give you a very precise control budget. We can map up exactly what we carried for the work in the estimate, the, the latest uh, DD estimate. And we can, we can know when we're bidding whether, which items we're bidding and what the cost we carry for those. Um, the documents are coming out, uh, Michelle mentioned March 30th, the end of the month, uh, 30th or 31st, right? But uh, one of those two days. Anyway, we're going to have uh, between bidding, uh, descoping, and then us finalizing and making a, a recommendation to the team. That'll take about five weeks, generally about two and a half to three weeks to bid. And then the last two weeks is us really uh, scrubbing those bids and making sure everything's covered properly. Um, and, and doing some final negotiations um, for the benefit of the owner. Uh, so we'll be looking for uh, the, the, um, the building committee approval uh, early in May. We'll have to pick a, a date uh, for a meeting to make sure we align with that. And then the work will start August 1st. So that's early package one. Any, any questions about that? I can see everyone because I have, sorry, okay. I have two screens. So yes, just recognize you raise your hand. I don't see any questions or any hands. So we're gonna to move to uh, early package two. Yep. So just looking a little bit further down the road, uh, here's early package two. Uh, this one's really the, that, that other early package had a little bit of float between when we award and when we start. Uh, this one is driving the critical path for the schedule, the concrete and the steel in particular. Um, so the documents are coming out the end of July. Uh, this scope, by, by the way, will be about uh, uh, 10 to 12 million. And again, once we finalize the scope of work for these, we'll have a, a control budget, a uh, more precise control budget. Um, and there's quite a few packages here. So it's the full site work package, which includes you know, the basic stuff like excavation and backfill for foundations, all the site utilities, but it includes all the uh, prep work for the site finishes. They do the site work does the base and material for uh, walkways and things like that. And they, we almost always buy out the bituminous paving with the site contractor as well. So that'll be a big scope of work. Uh, concrete is again, also the foundations, the, the building floor slabs and all the site concrete, whether it's retaining wall foundations or uh, sidewalks, that'll all be part of that. Uh, the structural steel is pretty straightforward for the building. The ground improvements, as I think most people know, we're having uh, using rigid inclusions on the eastern half of the uh, new building. Uh, so that'd be part of the scope and the glue lamb uh, columns and beams will be part of the scope too. Um, so the uh, bidding again is a bidding 
de-scoping and award is about five weeks. And so in early September, we'll be looking to get approval to award. And that one starts, you know, like five weeks later, uh, it would start with a little bit of site prep work and then the ground improvements would um, start. So that'll be a real hot item in terms of submittals, things like that. That's it, just wanted to give, give everyone a heads up that this stuff was coming, especially didn't want to surprise people uh, in early May when we're looking for the first few million dollars of uh, authorization to award. Any questions on any of this? I guess I can't. Ben. Oh, ben, Ben's got his hand up. A couple of things. So, so John, what's like, you know, last year, the year before that, the bidding environment was a little nutty, you know, in terms of, you know, hard, sometimes hard to get a numerous bid, numerous bids, that sort of stuff. Um, their escalation was going, you know, what's it like these days? And especially with, you know, with COVID and everything or coming out of COVID, whatever you want to call it. What's the story these days? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very favorable bid environment for you guys, the owner. Uh, we've been, uh, we haven't bid a lot of stuff. We bid something uh, this past fall and we're just bidding a, a project down in Cape Cod right now. Um, those both did well in the bidding, but we're also watching uh, some of the school, pro the, the one we bid in the fall was a real kind of oddball project in Cambridge, really complicated. So uh, it didn't surprise, it just did okay bidding and we met the budget. But um, I, we're also seeing some recent last three months, some hard bid projects that are coming really low. And it's the subs numbers that drive that. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, I think we're going to be good for the, for the demo package, which is right around the corner. And I, I would just say it this way. At some point, the market could start to pick up. People could get really optimistic. The private construction sector, which is slowed down, could could have a resurgence, um, or it could or it could stay. You know, it could kind of stay flat for a while. Like it's uh, it's anyone's crystal ball to to make that guess. But I'd say right now it's favorable, and I think it's going to last at least at least a few months. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll get at least that first package in, and we may well get the the full bidding in the fall uh, while it's still favorable. Great, great, thank you. Which would be nice, yeah. Seems to me like with, with this, what this got me thinking about was, um, looks like we're starting to get past just the, the drawings and, and the nice pictures into some real stuff here. So uh, <laughs> that's pretty good, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, messy, when you get the demo, it doesn't look like those nice renderings. We're, we're a little ways away from that, yeah. but it'll be good. But it's nice to talk about concrete and steel and, and yeah. site and that sort of stuff. So that's- Yeah, that's for sure. Progress. Okay, any, any other questions? Okay. And let's, um, I guess that's it. I don't know. Did uh, uh, any updates communication wise, Ben? Or? Yeah, just a, just a couple. Um, so, our, our subgroup that's been meeting, just um, in terms of helping me with communications, um, we have a good process on updating the, 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 new, the new web, I still call it the new website, um, new project website. And so, Folks will see you know, a faster turnaround on updating that with our materials. But I can just ask to make sure um, things like the minutes and the presentations are make sure that, that Stephanie DeLisi also gets them. So obviously myself and Grant, you know, are, you know, get, get the, so what, we, what we're trying to do after every meeting, sorry, what we're trying to do after, after every meeting is have a short summary of the meeting up there, you know, very short summary. We have some of those already. Um, and then have the um, presentation um, uh, and agenda, and then have the um, when they when they're available uh, the minutes to that meeting and the recording of that meeting, all on our on our you know meetings page. Okay, so they're easy to find uh, and 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 and, re and access. So I guess that what I, my request is just to make sure that when we have the minutes. Uh, if they can also be make sure they're shared as a as a, a, a standalone document with me and Stephanie and Grant, does that make sense? Right. Some, they're they're often embedded in in the in the in the packet for the week, which is good. Yeah. It's great. It's good to have it that way. Yeah. We, we also need it as a standalone, so we. Yeah, can I, th I think Chris ta has taken them historically and taken off the draft for review and say approved at this meeting, and it gets posted. I know he last week had 
had updated the ones uh, from a prior meeting. So good, good. Yeah, that, that that's the sort of thing that just we can lose sometimes because it comes in between meetings. Right. But, but that's all. Right. But otherwise, so so we have we feel like we have a good process. We made a couple, a couple updates um just the last couple of days, and uh, we'll continue to do that. Um, again, looking for a um a forum for the veteran school about swing space and doing that in the beginning of April. Um, so they'll have a real good understanding of, of um, how things are going with St. Anne's. Uh, and then later in, uh, once we get through the, the DD, submitting the DD package, have a, um, a community forum, um, uh, a broader community forum for, you know, for the general community uh, to give folks an update. Um, right. We're waiting to, to a later April, I think, for that. So we have some good progress um, on a number of things. The other big piece is that we'll have a joint um, school committee city council meeting on April 1st. Uh, and um, that'll focus on making sure that the, both the school committee and um, city council are caught up with the building, where the building committee is. Um, we'll be sharing actually some information from tonight and there'll also be um, an update um, on traffic, uh, the traffic uh, uh, process, as everyone knows, um, we presented the traffic commission last month, I guess it was, and um, we were we are um, uh, continuing to solicit input to strengthen the plan, both on site and then work with the city off site to make sure that um, vet vet school, like other schools, are, are are safe, have safe arrival and dismissal. We've also connected with Safe Routes to School um, and engaged them. They're an organization, um, a statewide organization that. Uh, our traffic engineers, um, uh, we, we have been working working with in in in, in, um, in uh, Gloucester here. Um, niche engineering cited them as a great resource, um, so we're also working with them. And the goal, city council, um, uh, traffic commission, safe routes, is all to keep on getting uh, good ideas that we can work with the city then on making sure that uh, there's safe as possible access you know to and from the school. So that that's 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 part of the work that's coming up on April first with the city council. That's all from us. I see Michelle has a hand up. Uh, she she's had her hand up the whole meeting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think when she got logged on, it came on and it's been that way. So yeah. no, I I actually just I had it up and then I put it down. I do have something to say. I just want to remind everyone that we are meeting next week. And that meeting is to approve the submission to the DD, uh, to the MSBA. And right. so since we, we haven't had any big issues with the reconciliation and everybody seems uh, happy with the design, that should be a fairly short meeting, but yeah. we will need to get it on record that we, we've approved that submission. And then once that's been approved, we will need the um, yeah. certified meeting minutes to go with that set of documents to the MSBA. Right, right. Te technically, it's actually the committee will be authorizing the OPM to submit the DD submission to the MSBA. So there's technically nothing to kind of review or approve per se, only because it's a whole process. The DD process has been involved, what's been on the drawings, Everything's being, you know, that's why the teams put th put this together, and it's it's consistent. So I think that's the main thing to be sure. So yeah, it's basically there's some language MSBA has to have for the vote, and basically this one is authorizing the OPM to submit the DD submission on behalf of the city. So. Tom, do we have to have that vote language presented to the group prior to the meeting? No, it's just normally most of the time we just put it in writing so the chair or those can read it <laughs> so that it meets the MSB. It's, th this one's more le less less uh, uh, restrictive than most of them. Most of them are you know, very clearly defined, mostly when you're dealing with funding approvals and whatnot, they wanna be sure the I's are dotted and T's are crossed. This one is more uh, general in nature, you know, that the committee's aware of what's in the package relative to the design, nothing has changed. All the SPED requirements are consistent with what was previously done. You know, that's really what it's about. So uh, they just don't like surprises that people are unaware of something going on. And uh, that, that's our job is to be sure that, you know, all the checks are, 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 are or boxes are checked on what's required with the submission. And uh, that we picked up all the questions and comments from the SD submission. 
and that the cost estimate is in line with uh, the budget. And so, you know, that's, you know, the designers doing their job, the CM's doing their job, and we're doing our job to be sure that MSBA is ready to do their review. So, and it'll take them, it's a process. They'll take them a number of weeks to do the review. Then they'll come back with maybe some comments. We'll respond to them. You know, we'll keep the committee advised as to what their comments are, what the responses are. Then that closes that up, that process. But then the CD process, construction documents, will start immediately starting April. You know, the design team will keep plugging along. So, so Tom, is it, is it safe to say, oh, sorry, did someone else want to go? I, I just wanted to make sure that we'll have a quorum for next week. <laughs> oh, that's important. Yeah. Yes. Can folks raise their hand if they're planning to be here next next week? That looks like a quorum, right? Yep. Okay. Um, so Tom, just to clarify that in a project where I mean, what I hear you saying is there isn't isn't much to approve because things are on, on path and there haven't been any any changes of note. There's the, the work has deepened as Michelle described, the right. more detailed, but in a, in a, in a project where, you know, the budget was the budget, they had to do value engineering where they had to change scope or they had to change design. Then at this point, a committee like ours would have much more to be reviewing, uh, right. approving, um, discussing that sort of stuff because right. we've been on this, you know, our path has been, you know, sort of pretty straight, straightforward here. Therefore we have less to, to review, manage, change, uh, right. discuss, debate. Is that, is that accurate? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, yep. It doesn't always go like this. And I think that's, you know, <laughs> so it's, this, is, this is a good thing. It's a very good thing. So, right. you know. All right. So. Are there any other questions about the documents that we'll be submitting? It is a much smaller binder than we've submitted for schematic design but it does include all of these meetings that we've had with the district and the documents that you've seen, as well as the cost estimates and the space summary. Yeah. Good, okay. looks like it'll be an easy meeting next time. Okay. Any more things, Jonathan? You're still muted. But... Okay, so um, if there's no more questions or, or uh, comments, um, do we have a motion to adjourn? Somebody want to raise their hand? Yeah, just, just I know. So Kathy so Clancy and, and Amy seconded. Okay. Okay. Okay, Chris, could we have a roll call vote? Uh, sorry, just matching up my notes. Uh, Jonathan Pope? Yes. Thank you. Richard Sapphire? Yes. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Craig Cotomer Tori? Yes. Thank you. Kathy Clancy? Yes. Thank you. Don Compton? Yes. Thank you. Gary Frisch? Yes. Thank you. Matt Fusco? Yes. Thank you. Grant Harris? Yes. Thank you. Joe Lucido? Yes. Thank you. Ben Lummis? Yes. Thank you. Amy Pascarello? Yes. Thank you. Adam Roselle? Yes. Thank you. And Katie Eunice? Yes. Thank you. Uh, it's unanimous. The, the meeting is adjourned. Uh, thank you all very much. And we'll see you um, uh, same time, same place next week. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night, everyone. Bye.